Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is Star Wars The Black Series, Ahsoka Tano and Kanan Jarrus in front of less. There's no such thing as a perfect action figure. As collectors, we're just hoping for the next figure we purchase to get as close to perfect as possible within the manufacturing capabilities of modern technology and our shared understanding of the laws of time and space. We have high standards, yes, but we are. We can be reasonable about our expectations from time to time. Ahsoka Tano debuted in the 2008 Clone Wars feature film. Fans watched her grow up over six seasons of the Clone Wars, learning the ways of the Force and the galaxy at large. She advanced through the ranks of the Jedi before abandoning the Jedi Council, the Jedi way of life, and the friendship of her master, Anakin Skywalker. Her appearance on both seasons of Rebels ramped up the drama as Darth Vader began to play a more prominent role in the series and promised some closure to a dangling plot thread left over from the Clone Wars era. Kanan Jarrus, also known as The Last Padawan, has history in the Clone Wars era, but his story is more relevant to the original trilogy era, marked by Anakin's fall to the dark side and rebirth as Darth Vader. Both of the characters were embraced by the fans, and when the six-inch Black Series figures were announced, expectations were very unrealistic. Especially considering that, like me, most fans probably thought the Black Series was going to ignore Rebels characters altogether. Thus far, the Black Series has focused on characters that actually appeared in the films, which, not for nothing, are based on actual people with actual faces and stuff. Ahsoka and Kanan are the first figures to have realistic interpretations made of characters who previously have only been depicted as stylized animated characters. Their voices are performed by actors, but their actions are performed by animators. Both figures have standard Black Series articulation with some limitations related to their respective character designs. For Ahsoka, her Togruten head stuff up there, the horns and tentacles or whatever, render her neck articulation useless. Her skirt armor and the cloth goods piece underneath limit her range of leg movement. Kanan's right shoulder pauldron prevents his arm from swiveling too far outward. And why double joints are okay for pants but not sleeves is a mystery that will never be solved. Even characters without knee pads or armor of any kind have double jointed knees so you can't really make the aesthetic argument, but whatever. If I had to find a problem with either figure, and I just, I hate to go there with these two, but it's the internet, it's a YouTube show, what am I doing if I'm not obsessing over the minute details of inconsequential things? Some of the colors are a bit toned down from the animated versions, just a bit much for my taste. Ultimately, I really don't care because everything else is spot on. The fact that Ahsoka has both of her lightsabers and Kanan's lightsaber can be broken into its two component handle parts and stored on his belt just like in the show? How could you do it better? Is Mafex going to make Rebels figures? Figu arts? These are likely the only shot we're going to get at these characters in 6 inch form, so I'm very pleased that Hasbro did so much right. They're so well done that the only real concern I have is whether or not Hasbro has plans to make the rest of the core team. We've already seen pictures of Sabine, but Hera, Ezra, Zeb, Chopper, all unknowns. And if you're asking me, I'd love an Agent Callus, any of the Inquisitors, and while I admit it's a super long shot since he was such a late addition to the show, AP5. If you're not watching the Rebels animated series and never cared for the Clone Wars, then both of these figures are an easy pass. But if you just can't get enough Star Wars, and very soon we're going to know where everyone's limit is on how much Star Wars is enough, and Rebels fills the void in your life that the end of Clone Wars left. Then these figures are a must-have, so buy them if you see them, and if you see two, leave one for the next collector. Thanks for watching. Let us know in the comments below if you're a fan of non-film-related Star Wars storytelling. Please make sure you like and subscribe, tell your friends, share the show, and while there's no such thing as a perfect YouTube show host, I'm a pretty good Dan Larson if you have realistic expectations. I'm not a fan of non-film <laughs> Star Wars storytelling. Or, or Dan Larson.